quilting or channel stitching is really quite simple on the baby lock seal. The first thing we want to make sure is we've got a stretch stitch selected and I always like to use a stitch length of about two and a half to three. Now this is a technique I use whether I'm quilting a quilt or whether I'm doing something decorative for a home deck project or a garment. And the next thing I'm going to make sure is I've got that needle in that center position so it's set on that number two setting. Now we're going to use the standard presser foot but there's one more attachment we're going to use and this is actually called the quilt guide and what this does is this helps us space our rows of stitching and where it fits in is on the back side of the presser foot holder you'll notice that there's almost like a little tin roof with a little groove underneath that guide simply slides right into that position and now I'm set the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew my first row of stitching. Once I have that row set up, then I can determine how far apart I want my rows of stitching. So we're going to stitch from the top to the bottom, following that marked line. And I've prepped my fabric in this case because I'm actually, this would be a way that I would finish off a quilt. I've got my top layer, I've got a batting in between, and then I've got my back layer. If I were doing this for a garment, I would again have a top layer with some type of stabilizer on the back side of that fabric to help support those stitches. So now I've come to the end, I'm gonna raise my needle out of the fabric, cut my thread, and clean off that presser foot and then using some type of ruler I'm going to determine that I want my next row of stitching to be let's say a half an inch from my first row. So I've got my ruler or my hem marker set on a one inch marking and I'm going to simply slide this guide so that it's set on a half inch marking. So in this case there's my half inch marking and there's my one inch marking and I've got my guide aligned. So now what's going to happen is my next row of stitching is going to be a half an inch away from that first row of stitching. To do that I need to place the edge of this guide on that line of stitching or the last row of stitching that I created keeping this guide on that row of stitching as I stitch from the top to the bottom. Will oftentimes go a little slower. I find that my accuracy is a little better if I make sure that I am stitching at a speed that I can continually see where that guide is riding. That it's continually riding on that row of stitching. Okay. Take the needle out of the fabric, raise our presser foot, and then cut. So now we have two rows of stitching that are half an inch apart. To create the third row of stitching, I would do the same thing. Place that guide on the last row of stitching, the last row that I stitched, and stitch down to the end. You can sew straight rows of stitching, or you can sew rows across your fabric for a diagonal look. And here's the big reveal. There are three rows of stitching, which we consider either our channel stitching or, uh, or grid stitching that can be used for either quilting or for any garment. All this on the Baby Lock Seal. <laughs>